Hello, my name is Ruben, and today I'm going to show you just how easy it is to set up Ruby on Rails using Sigwin on Microsoft Windows Vista. So given I'm going to be doing this tutorial in 10 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. So first place I'm headed to is rubyonrails.com, and we're going to the Downloads section. And once we're there, uh, pretty much we're going to be following right along the same uh, motto here with get Ruby on Rails in no time and for the most part the same steps uh, Ruby we're going to be installing using Sigwin however and uh, following some of the other steps as you normally would for setting up Ruby on Rails just keeping things moving along I'm heading to a website sigwin.com c-y-g-w-i-n dot c-o-m and once you're there you'll see an install Sigwin now icon go ahead and save that down to a location on your hard drive. I'm just saving it in my downloads folder and once you've got that saved down open it up. I'm going to minimize these uh, other windows here and enlarge the setup install shield. So onto the next screen basically I'm going to be leaving all the defaults. We're installing from the internet. We want to install to C semicolon backslash Cygwin direct connection is what you'll want to probably have unless you've got a proxy. Uh, mirror.mcs.anl.gov is about the fastest darn site out there. Now we're downloading the setup install screen. And for the most part, all the packages that you'll need to get Ruby on Rails uh, in Sigwin is already uh, sort of pre selected for you. I'll just open up the base packages but what we're going to want to concentrate on is just two other trees uh, that will want to grab two things out of the databases section and that's lib sqlite 3 devel and just down from that a little bit further is the sqlite executable moving down to the next uh, tree exact next tree is the devel section and we need to get three programs out of here we need to get gcc the compiler and Another tool that goes along with the compiler is make, quite a long tree. And the next program, last but not least, is the Ruby interpreter. So once you've got all of those selected, go ahead and click your next button. Now we're downloading all the packages and I'm going to go ahead and speed this right to the end. Once again, keeping this tutorial as quick as possible. Okay, we're just running a, a few of the post install uh, of the setup programs now. A little shift in the matrix as I move things ahead a bit. We've got to the end of our install program for installing Sigwin. Now, go ahead and just create, leave create an icon on the desktop, and we'll select finish. Okay, so now that we have Ruby set up within Sigwin, uh, we need to just do one more thing with our Sigwin environment before I can download another package, the last package with our browser, and that's by clicking on the newly created Sigwin icon, and what that does is create some initial environment uh, variables and our home directory, which we'll need to download our Ruby gems to. So once that's done, go ahead and exit out. The last package we need to get by going right back to our browser is the Ruby Gems program. And if you scroll down on rubyrails.com on the download section and you'll see the Ruby Gems location and we'll download that by going directly to rubyforge.org from the download link. And I'm going to grab the latest version and particularly instead of the zip or gem we want to go ahead and grab the tape archive zip. So we'll go ahead and click on that link and save that. You're going to need to save that to a very special location and that is the newly created home directory by going to C colon backslash Sigwin home and the newly created account when we initialized and save that right in the home directory directory that we created. Okay, now that we have our Ruby Gems downloaded, we go ahead and m just minimize the browser, although we won't be needing it to download any more packages. We will be needing it to just do our final Ruby on Rails test. So the next order of business is to get our Ruby Gems set up. And the way that you'll want to do that, uh, normally you're going to be setting it up through Sigwin, but we have to get to Sigwin now in a very special manner on Windows Vista. And by that I mean go ahead and start go to the start menu click in CMD in the start search hold the control key hold the shift key and hit enter 
and what that does is bring you into the special privilege mode so once you're into that mode CD to the root of the drive CD into SIGWIN and you'll see that SIGWIN.BAT is there and that link that actually refers to that batch file but we're going to need to execute it right within the MS-DOS shell in the special privileged mode so that we can maintain user access control privileges. Hit enter and you can see that we're right back into the SIGWIN environment. Now if you type ls, you'll see that Ruby Gems is there. Let's extract that. TAR space hyphen ZXVF and the name of the package. Once you've done that, CD into the newly created directory. And once you're into the new directory, go ahead and type your Ruby setup.rb. And this is now installing our Ruby Gems. So now that we have our Ruby Gems set up, go ahead and exit out of the special privileged mode and exit out of the DOS mode. And we needed to do that on Windows Vista with the privileged method. Uh, we can open up our SIGWIN icon directly now and that will put us right into the user mode, the normal user account mode. And let's go ahead and install Rails. So to do that, uh, now that we've got Gems, uh, type gem install rails and we also want the S SQLite 3 hyphen Ruby package and hit enter okay so now that we have our rails environment set up you can see the dialog uh, of the installation of our rails and SQLite 3 Ruby gems let's go ahead and create a test instance. So Rails test and what that does is create our skeleton uh, default instance of Rails and we can change into that newly created directory an instance cd test and we can execute our script server. That brings up and boots our Webrick server once that's fully loaded up, we can go right back to our browser, open up another tab, type in HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 3000, enter, and there we go. We have Ruby on Rails set up via SIGWIN, and just to verify by looking at the environment variables, there we have it, 1.8.7 i386 SIGWIN. And basically, that will conclude our tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you find this uh, tutorial meaningful. Uh, next, in other tutorials, we'll be doing more sophisticated, uh, customizing our SIGWIN environment for Ruby on Rails. Thanks for watching.